Hi folks, welcome back. So, symbols are notoriously difficult to synthesise from scratch. Now, why is that? Well, symbols and gongs and bells and sounds like that are the type, these types of sounds that we call inharmonic sounds. What that means is that they don't have a nice simple relationship with their fundamental frequency. The fundamental frequency is generally the lowest and loudest frequency in a sound and it's what tells our ear what note that that sound is playing. Um, and this causes problems for us in analog synthesis where we tend to use a synthesis technique called subtractive synthesis. Okay, so what we do is we start with a harmonically simple sound like this square wave. And I say harmonically simple because while it sounds very rich because it's got lots of harmonic information, you can see this is the fundamental frequency here and all of the harmonics are integer, so whole number multiples of this fundamental. So you can see that we're starting at 100 hertz, that's this center frequency here is 100 hertz, and that it goes up 100 hertz per division. So this is 100 hertz, 200 hertz, 300 hertz, so that's three times. This is five times, this is seven times. So square waves only have the odd harmonics. And so that's what I mean by simple. It's rich, it's got lots of harmonics, but they're nice and evenly related to the fundamental frequency. And if I change this to a different type of sound, like say a triangle wave, we see that we have that same relationship. It's actually also the odd frequencies, but we've got different amplitudes. That's why it sounds different. And this is what I mean again by simple. So these sounds are harmonically rich, but they're simple in terms of their structure. And just to show you, the sine wave is the pure tone. So you can see that that sine wave there has only one frequency. And so if I adjust this, let's go back to the square wave. So as I adjust the frequency, you can see that the harmonics all spread out nice and evenly. So they have that nice, simple relationship with the fundamental. That's what I mean. So to get back to my point, subtractive synthesis is when we start from a rich sound like a square wave or we can mix sounds. We can mix a square wave with a triangle wave or whatever. But then what we do to get to the sound that we want is we filter bits away to get to that sound. This is why inharmonic sounds are difficult to create subtractively because if we're starting with this simple relationship and all we can do is filter out frequencies, it's very difficult for us to make those complex relationships because they're just not there to begin with. So what can we do? Well, what we are gonna do is we're gonna take a simple logic gate and we're gonna use a clever little trick that's gonna enable us to take two ordinary square waves and mix them together in a way that's gonna give us a really inharmonic output, an output where the harmonics aren't related in an integer way, a whole number way, to the fundamental frequency. That's going to give us a much more metallic sounding sound than we could have hoped for before with what we've been doing, and it spares us the expense of having to go and create some super complicated synthesizer. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take a specific type of logic gate called an exclusive OR gate, and we're going to use that as a frequency mixer. Now, what frequency mixers do is they take two frequencies and they output a signal that has the sum and difference frequencies. So if we take two sine waves, let's take one at 220 hertz and one at 200 hertz, and we put them through this frequency mixer that we're going to make, we'll get a signal that has two frequencies. One at 20, 220 minus 200 is 20, and one at 420. So if you imagine how we're putting a square wave through this, so th these are just two frequencies. A square wave at 100 hertz has 100 hertz, 300 hertz, 500 hertz, etc., etc., 700, 900, and so does the other one. So we're going to get sum and difference frequencies for all of those different harmonics of that square wave. So we're going to get not only tons of frequency information, but they're also going to have these bizarre relationships to each other. So the final question we really have to answer is, well, what is an XOR gate in the first place? So an XOR gate, I don't know how much you know about logic. We've not really done any logic on this. But basically a logic gate is something that takes two inputs and outputs an output. So if we've got two inputs, we've got four possible combinations of inputs. And an exclusive OR gate basically outputs a one if either of the inputs are true, but not both. So this, neither of the inputs are true. This one, one of them is. This one, the other one is. And this one, both of them are. So zero. So how does a gate that does this make frequency mixing, like this weird kind of frequency multiplying circuit. Why don't I go up on the board and I'll show you. Okay, so let's have a look. So on here, I've got two square waves just coming from one of our 4106s, and they're coming into this. This is our exclusive OR gate, it's a, 40, it's a CD4070. 
So these are the two inputs, these are the two scope probes, and this is the output going to a third scope probe. So if we look now on the scope, so we can see this channel here is one square wave, this channel here is the other, and this is the output of the XOR gate. This is the scope is just doing the multiplication of the two functions. So let's just have a look through a few. To simplify this, let's just assume both these square waves are going from one to minus one to make the maths nice and easy. So let's do the multiplication. So one times minus one is minus one. One times one is one. Minus one times one is minus one. We'll see here, minus one times minus one is one. One times minus one is minus one and so on. And we can see here how if we look at the XOR, we have the same thing. So one XOR with naught is one. One XOR with one is naught. Naught XOR with one is one and so on. And we can see how this XOR is just the inverted function of this. Well, you might think, well, that's not the same because these are inverted. But from a frequency perspective, these two waves will sound identical. Your ear can't tell the difference between a polarity inversion of 180 degrees. You know, if we mixed these two signals together, you might be in trouble. So you might want to reinvert these with just an inverting buffer. But for for a frequency point of view, this these two things are the same, and this is very very easy to do. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, this is the circuit that we've just been looking at. These are our two square waves. This is the symbol for an exclusive OR gate, and we're going to take this and I'm gonna run the output through that BJT VCA that we made in the last video, and we're gonna see what it sounds like. So, let's see what it sounds like. So I'm just running this output down into the BJT VCA from last time. So now we've taken two simple sounding square waves and we've multiplied them together. And the output we get sounds like this. So you can see how just by adding an XOR gate, we've made a much more complex sound. So we can see in the time domain, we see this complex looking waveform that we saw before. And if we look at the FFT of this, it's very noisy for a start because there's lots of harmonic content. We can see these, you can see harmonics kind of moving up and down at the same time. So we can see some moving up, but we can see some coming down as well. And you can hear that. You can hear one go whoop and one go whoop. And so we have this much more complex bass now. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take all six of those 4106 outputs and run them through all four of the exclusive OR gates that we have on our chip. Okay so here's the full thing. So we've got these four oscillators here which are kind of set and forget. We'll set these broadly and then we've got these two here which we might put out on the kind of faceplate of our module so that we've got some control and then we'd send these two out. I've run out of space but we'll send these two into some buffering op amps to be mixed. Okay, so here we are on the board. I know it looks a bit of a monstrosity on the board, but if you look at the schematic in the description, you can see it's actually quite a straightforward circuit. It's just lots of connections, because I've got this. We're using all six of the oscillators on the 4106. We're using all four of the XOR gates. This is the BJT from last time. This is just some buffering op amps over here. And we can see we've got some kind of cool sounds. So you have to experiment. So I've kind of got these four as they're kind of set. You set these kind of broadly. So for each different kind of sound, if you wanted a cymbal sound, you'd set it, you'd set these four in a certain way, or if you wanted a like cowbell or some other type of sound, you'd set these four to get that kind of area. And then you've got these two here, which are our last two gates. And they're our kind of, for our fine adjustment. And then we got our VCA to change the shape. Sounds like a church bell. So you can get all sorts of metallic types of sounds from this. So I want you to just go away and have fun with it. So that's a kind of a more cymbal-y sound. That's kind of like a china almost, or a ride. So go away and have fun with these. Okay, so that was a little exploration into the different types of sounds we can make with our, these cool CMOS chips. 
I hope that inspires you to go away and try out some things that you might not have thought before that you could make music with. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more like it and you want to support the channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. It really helps me out. And um, if not, please be sure to leave a like, subscribe, share with your friends, and keep your eyes out for new videos every week. And I'll see you all next time.